Hello, I'm going to talk about fractions. We're just going to do a quick review of the different ways of adding and multiplying and working with fractions. <clears throat> Let's start with this example. If I have a fraction 2 over 4, we can change it to a simpler form or, or a lower term. If we look at the top and bottom of the fractions, the numerator and the denominator, and if we can see that there are common factors, then we can actually divide the common factors from the top and the bottom. So in this case we have 2 and 4 and 2 is a common factor to both the 2 and 4. So what we can do to bring it to the lowest term is to divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. If we do that, top and bottom by 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Right? Now, this is a simple uh, operation. The important thing to remember though, is that, is the reason why we can do it. The reason is that 2 over 2 is 1. So when we divide by 2, and 2 at the top and bottom, we are really dividing the whole fraction by 1. And that's why we can do it, because when you divide something by 1, the answer should be the same. So even though the half looks different from the 2 over 4, they are really equal. Okay. And because half is made up of smaller numbers than 2 over 4, it is, we, we say that we think of it as a simpler form. In the same way, if I have, say, half, I can also multiply the top and bottom by the same number to change it into another form. Like, if I do times 2 on top and times 2 at the bottom, I will get back 2 over 4 on top and 4 at the bottom. So again, you may already know this, but the important thing here that we must remember is again the reason why we can do this is because 2 over 2 is 1 and when you multiply anything by 1, the answer should be the same. So even though 2 over 4 looks different from 1 over 2, they are equal. So with these basic um, operations, we can start adding fractions. Suppose that I want to add the two fractions. Let me start with a simple example. 1 over 4 and 2 over 4. If I have two fractions with the same denominator, then the way to add them is to combine the denominator, 4 and 4, and add the numerators. So I put them under both under 4, and then I just add the top. And the answer is 3 over 4. So again, we should understand a bit about why we can do something like that. If you're seeing this for the first time, it will look strange. How, why can we just combine the two denominators into one? We are not adding or multiplying the denominators. The reason for this is more basic. 
we can think of this one quarter as one part out of four things. All right, if you have four apples, then one apple will be one quarter of that. So it's one out of four things. Now the two quarter, you can think of it as two out of the four things. So if you add one out of four apples to two out of four apples, then we'll get three out of four apples. So it is a little bit more to think about when we add fractions. So we can think of the denominator as how many parts of something there is. So if you think of it this way, or if you think of the four as say four marks in a test paper, then it's one out of four marks plus two out of four marks, then it's just three out of four marks. So the four is the idea of how many parts there are all together. So that's why you don't actually have to add them directly when you are adding the fractions like that. So the idea is, this idea is uh, the basic idea about adding fractions. Now, let me do something slightly more difficult. What if I add two fractions that have different denominators? <clears throat> the first step is always to change both denominators to the same number. Because only if the denominators are the same, then we can add, we can simply add the numerator directly. If they are not the same, we cannot add the denom denominator, uh, the, the numerator. We cannot just add the two ones on top. And we cannot add the two and three at the bottom. That would be wrong. Right? So don't try to do this. Don't try to do 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 3. That's wrong. Right. So the first step is that I must change each of these so that they have the same denominator. And the way to do that is to look at the 2 and 3 and multiply them by some number so that think they become equal. So I must do a... Can you imagine doing a separate exercise? Say 1 over 2. Now if I multiply the top and the bottom by 3, I will get 3 over 6. So half is actually the same as 3 over 6, and 1 third is the same as, if I multiply the top and bottom by 2, I get 2 over 6. So 1 third is the same as 2 over 6. So if I change these to 3 over 6 and 2 over 6, they become equal, and I can just add the numerator. 5 over 6. But how do we know that we should multiply the half by 3 over 3 and the one third by 2 over 2? The idea is that we look at the denominator, look at each of them, and we think about what number we can multiply by each of them to give me a common denominator, a, a number that is the same for both. And the easiest way to do that is to just multiply the two numbers directly. That means if I multiply the 2 by a 3 and I multiply this 3 by the 2, I will get 6. And, and so all I need is to multiply the top and bottom of the half by the 3 in the other fraction, top and bottom of 1 third by the denominator of the other fraction. So that's a quick way to do it. But if the numbers get big, it can be more complicated because the numbers, when you multiply them, you end up with a big number, it's harder to calculate. And the way to do that is to use an idea called the lowest common multiple. So we'll talk more about that next time. But for now, this will be a quick way to add the fractions.
And I'll say a bit about multiplying fractions now. Suppose that I have 2 over 3 times 1 over 4. I can multiply these two fractions by multiplying the top and multiplying the bottom separately. So 2 times 1 is 2 and 3 times 4 is 12. So that's one way to do it. Now it's important to see that there's a difference between multiplying fractions and adding fractions. Because when we add fractions, we cannot add the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom separately. But when we multiply fractions, we can. And we get 2 over 12 here. Now usually, when we get to this form, we should think about whether we can simplify the fraction. And that usually means that we look at the top and the bottom and see if there's a common factor. In this case, 2 is a common factor of the fraction. Now, so what we can do is we can divide the top and the bottom by 2 and we'll get 1 over 6. 2 over 2 is 1, 12 over 2 is 6. Or, the, the quick way to do this is to use cancelling, which means that instead of writing this out in full, you just do it mentally. You say 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we put, cancel the 2 and put a 1 next to it. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. We cancel the 12 and put a 6 next to it. So this is a quick way of writing this. Now, so that is very important to remember when we do cancelling. Alright, that what we are really doing is we are dividing the top and the bottom by the same number. So after you have written this out, this out you get the answer of 1 6. So that's one way to do this question. Now another way to do this sum is to actually do the cancelling at the start. Now that's something that students often miss. Because instead of Doing it at the start, they might multiply the whole thing out and then do the cancelling at the end. But what you can do is that if you do the cancelling at the beginning, it's always a, often a lot easier because you get smaller numbers at the start before you actually multiply them out. So how can we do that? You can do cancelling among between any number on top and any number at the bottom. Now remember that I, I must emphasize that this is only possible if they are multiplied together. You can't do cancelling in this way if it is a plus or a minus. So in this case, we can look at the top and bottom, just look for two numbers with the same factors. In this case, 2 and 4. Both of them have the common factor of 2. So I can divide this by 2, this gives me 1, and I can divide 4 at the bottom by 2, and that gives me 2. So I've done my cancelling. Now, making use of the new numbers, I would multiply the top, which is 1 and 1, so that's easier to multiply, and multiply 3 and 2 at the bottom to get 6. So you see we end up with the same fraction. So that would be a lot easier if you, if you can do the cancelling before you do the multiplying. We'll stop here.